Welcome back to another video. Today's video is definitely not the norm for this channel, but as we all know, nothing right now is normal. I wasn't going to make this video, but after seeing all the misinformation online and foolish things that people are doing, I felt it was absolutely necessary to help others get good information. We all know that frequent hand washing and avoiding close contact with other people is the best thing you can do to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, so I will not be discussing that but I will be discussing other things that you should do in the event you need to go shopping for food and other essentials. Now, if you do need to leave your house to go shopping, make sure you do it at a time when there's going to be much less people out. Either go very early in the morning or go very late at night. It's also better to go to a self-checkout line so you can check yourself out and have very little interaction with others. Leave the store so you can go home, clean up, and put everything away. When I go into a store, I look for the hand sanitizing wipes. I'll grab one, I'll wipe over the shopping cart handle, and I'll throw it away. Then what I'll do is I'll take another one, and I'll keep this in my pocket. And the reason for that is when you're walking through a store, if you go into a freezer section for frozen food or a refrigerator section, you want to have this ready so you can grab the door with the wipe in your hand. You do not want to use your bare hand, so you use this to open and close the door, put it back in your pocket, and then when you're all finished shopping, you want to take this, when you go to check out with your credit card, put your finger, just like this, all right? And then when you go to enter your PIN number, use this. Just go like that. This way you're not having any contact with your hand on that keypad. The credit card, you're the only one that touched, so that should be fine. You can put that right back in your pocket. If you'd like, on the way out, sometimes there's another dispenser for the sanitizing wipes. Take that with you. When you get into your car, you can wipe your hands again, as well as the door handle on your vehicle. When you're in the store shopping, clearly if anybody is coughing or sneezing, turn around and go to a different aisle. Come back to that aisle later. And if somebody sneezes very close to you, which hopefully does not happen, close your eyes, turn around, and just walk the opposite direction. The virus can enter through your eyes, so you definitely want to protect your eyes. I like to carry sunglasses, larger ones like you see right here. They'll cover more of your eye area, so if there is a mist in the area, after somebody sneezed or coughed, this will block a lot of it from going into your eyes. Now at the moment, I do not wear any of these masks when I go out shopping, but if things get worse, I will definitely be wearing these. I purchased this years ago, during the swine flu, a whole case of these N95s. They're sealed and they're still good. This one I purchased recently, I was doing some work in my attic, so I wanted to have one of these rather than this type. And this I also purchased at the same time as these here during the swine flu. Let me go over the masks now because there's a few things I wanna show you to make sure that everything's working properly. And I'm also going to give you some tips on what you can do if you can't get replacement masks because normally, if you take this out and you're exposed, you want to throw this away when you get home, especially these disposable N95s. But if you can't get your hands on new ones and you know you're going to be going shopping again, then you're definitely not going to want to throw it away. And I'm going to show you what you can do that'll help you use this and have a very low risk of being infected by reusing the mask. So let me move this stuff first out of the way. We'll get back to this in a minute. I'll explain what this is. Let's take a look at this one first. Now these N95 masks are available with a valve and without. The cheaper ones don't have the valve and the purpose of the valve is to make it easier when you exhale. When you inhale, all the air is going to pass through this material and when you exhale, instead of it being forced backwards through the material, it's going to exit through this valve. I'll give you a close-up in a minute so you can take a look. It's nothing more than a very thin piece of rubber that seals tightly over a plastic ring. Now there was an image of a man from Barcelona, Spain. I saw it a few days ago right over here. And when I looked at it, I just couldn't get over how ridiculous it was. Because this person had a heavy beard and they were wearing a mask without the valve, which is fine. But you cannot wear this if you have a beard. People need to understand that this needs to have a very nice tight seal against your skin on the opposite side. This edge, as well as this edge. This is the one I was using for some work around the house. That's why it's a little dirty, but these edges need to be very tight against your skin. 
if you have a lot of hair on your face, such as a beard, or you haven't shaved, what's going to happen, this edge is not going to be tight against your skin. You're going to have all that hair between this edge and your skin. So when you take a deep breath, the air is not going to be filtered, or all of it, through the mask. And what's going to happen, you're going to be drawing in some air through the sides, all the way around where you have a beard, and that's going to have pathogens inside of it, and it's going to find its way into the mask, and you're going to inhale it. So I know you guys love those beards, but if you're going to be thinking about wearing a mask, you're definitely going to want to consider shaving that beard until after this whole situation with the coronavirus clears up. Your beard will grow back. Now another thing that I saw which is very foolish, when you open this up, all right, so this right here goes just like that. That's the bottom underneath your chin, all right, and this is the top. On the top part, there's an aluminum strip. So I see people walking around, they have this over their face like this, and this whole top edge is open around the sides of their nose, which is stupid. So what happens when you take a deep breath, you think you're getting filtered air, but you're not because the space on the left and right side of your nose is letting all the outside air in, and you're defeating the purpose of wearing the mask. So the most important thing, have a clean shaven face if you're a guy. Make sure it fits nice and tight around your chin and over the top of your nose. And then once it's over your nose, you're going to get the metal strip which is in here, a piece of aluminum, and you're going to contour it to your nose. And then you're going to contour the sides into your face, and now when you take a breath, everything is going to go through the fabric, and nothing's going to leak around the edges. Now an important thing with these valves, sometimes they could be faulty. So before you take one of these out in public, what you want to do is place your mouth directly over this opening and blow. Blow very gently. Air should flow out very easily. If it does, great, then what you're going to do next, keep your mouth in the same position over that opening, gently suck. When you suck, what's going to happen, this should seal off tight. If this doesn't seal off tight and you have any kind of a leak happening, take the mask and throw it away because it's not going to do you any good. Now with this mask, it is a disposable type. I mean, I use it a few times around the house for work, but if you're going to have any kind of viruses that are going to collect on the outside of this, or on the top edge, or on the bottom edge, usually you would come home and just carefully take this off, throw it in the trash, then you would wash your face and wash your hands, and then you'd be good to go. But if you don't have more of these and you want to use it again, there is something that you can do. There's actually two things that you can do. When you remove it, you're going to lay it down, and you're going to take some 70% rubbing alcohol. This is isopropyl alcohol. The CDC recommends using between 60% and 90% concentration. I read a few reports that the 70% concentration, because it has a higher water content, actually does a better job at killing the virus. So what you want to do is if you purchase this one right here, this is 91%. If you want to get it down to 70%, like I did for this bottle right over here, take a couple of ounces and then you're going to take 30% of that amount. So 30% of two ounces is 0.6. So just over a half of an ounce, you're going to add purified water, and then you're going to mix it up, and then you'll have a concentration right around 70%. You want to take that mixture and place it in a small bottle like you see right here. This has a highly atomized spray. This was from a cough medicine bottle, and it just works perfectly. You don't want this drenched but you do want to be able to spray it down if you're going to reuse it, so you go like this. All right, you let it sit and evaporate, and then you're gonna turn it upside down, and you're gonna make sure you get all these edges in here, and you're gonna do the whole back side, get in between all the folds. Let that dry out, and when it dries out, there's one other thing that you can do if you really wanna ensure that this is safe to use again. Okay, this dried very quickly with the alcohol spray. Let me show you the other thing that you can do. You can use a UVC light. This one here is one that I made years ago, and it's a UVC light that does not produce ozone. Some of them do. You do not want the ozone producing light. It's not good to inhale it. It can damage the lining of your lungs. So make sure you get the right UVC light. I'll place a link in the video description area if you need to know the right one. 
you're going to take that light and do not look at it. It can damage your eyes. You're going to position it directly over that mask. You want to make sure the light is covering the entire mask when it powers up. And you want to leave it for about 20 minutes. Once you expose that side for 20 minutes, you're going to flip it around. And you're going to make sure you do the entire mask on that side. Leave it like that so you get all the pleats. And then you're going to flip this side up like that and do the same on this side. You want to make sure the rubber band is underneath so the light is not blocked. And you want to make sure you fully irradiate all of the mask. If you spray it and you do that, this mask should be pretty safe to use. But I think even if you just sprayed it down with the 70% alcohol and allowed it to dry, it would still be safe enough for you to reuse. Now let me show you the other two masks. This one right here is made of neoprene. It has Velcro, it goes around the back of your head ties together and this one doesn't have aluminum inside the filtration part it has it on the outside underneath this piece of plastic so once this is over your nose you're going to squeeze it into the correct position this also has valves you can see it right there the disc both sides you want to blow through like I told you previously to make sure these seal if they don't seal change the valves or throw it away now normally if you wear this when you go out, you come home and then you remove this filter and you can throw it away if you have a whole kit. You just pop in a new filter. But after you pop this filter out, it would be a very good idea to either spray this down with the same 70% alcohol solution and let it dry or just take this and put it in your washing machine. Once it comes out of the wash, install the new filter and then you're good to go to reuse it. Right here you can see the replacement valves for that mask and the replacement filters. These used to be very inexpensive, but right now with everything that's going on, people are taking advantage of others by price gouging. Isn't that wonderful? This is basically the same thing, just a different style. Neo mask has the aluminum over the top. Make sure that's perfect around your nose. This one has a valve as well. You have to blow through here and then suck to make sure it's working properly. This one you just grab right here and it pops off and you can just button down the new filter. You can remove the filter material on the inside, throw this in the wash, and then just pop in the new filter material. And the most important thing after taking these off is that you wash your face and wash your hands. Because if somebody sneezed or coughed and you walk through that cloud of mist, it's going to be all over this. It's going to be on your skin, on your face. It's going to be on your hair. And if you have a beard, which like I said is the worst, it's going to be all over the beard. So when you take this off, you think you're good, but you're not. Because if you touch the beard and then you touch your mouth, you just transfer it from the beard to your mouth. So guys, I hope these tips help you out and you all stay safe. Thank you very much for watching.